Now Robert Matura moves to the front, the Roseville, Minnesota native. Matura leaving Murphy behind. And that is Robert Matura from Minnesota. Now the two mile runner up has a win in his Last cross country season was the first time I couldn't say a season went relatively smooth. From contracting COVID to losing a shoe at state, it was filled with setbacks. However, I did end on a high note, accomplishing two of my three season goals in my final race. That last performance skyrocketed me up numerous places in multiple rankings and shows I can be one of the top runners in the state. Last season was clearly only a sliver of the things I can accomplish, and this upcoming track season is an opportunity to prove that. This documentary is going to be split into two segments. The first following my winter buildup, which will include workouts, long runs, and a time trial. The second will document my track season, as well as the journeys of the same four teammates for my cross country season. Today is Saturday, December 17th, which marks the day of my first steady fast long run of the season. Last winter, I dropped my average pace across nine miles from seven flat to 558, and this winter I'm looking to further lower that average, this time across 10 miles. The goal today is to run by feel and see where I'm at. Over the next several weeks, I put together a solid string of workouts, long runs, strides, and lifting to build my fitness. Today is simply a midwinter check to see roughly where I'm at in the mile. I haven't done any work on the track, so I'm not expecting to crush my PR, but it still should be fun to get out there and compete. Having negative split that and feeling like I could have run faster, running 429 has me feeling really confident going into the track season. However, it doesn't start for another 42 days, so in the meantime, the climb continues. Unfortunately, just 12 days after the time trial, it was time for my first test. While I was out playing hockey for fun, I got slashed on my left knee. I thought nothing of it since a bruise had never affected my running. The next day though, it started hurting on my long run, but I thought nothing of it since the pain was slight and tolerable so I completed the run progressing from 6.43 down to 5.10. At this point, I was feeling extremely happy with my fitness, but as I walked around that weekend, my knee pain progressed to a point that I could barely walk. I ran seven miles on Monday through immense pain, thinking I could just run through the bruise. The next day, however, it hurt to a point that running through was no longer an option. I took four days off before starting back up again, running three, five, and 2.8 miles across three days. I continued to run in serious pain and on the third day, I decided I couldn't keep training this way. So I biked for five days, but experienced some slight pain and eventually decided that too wasn't good for me. I took a little more time off before I tried to get back on the roads on March 6th, just seven days out from the first day of practice. I started building my mileage slowly, making sure to take care of my knee. And now it's time for a new era.
I ended up running 203 high, splitting 63-60. I was extremely surprised to be in this shape after taking so much time off, but was also happy and excited for the future. And now, before the first outdoor meet, it's time to introduce you to my teammates and their goals. My name is Max Abramson. I am Maceo Young. My name's Aaron Brown. My goal for the 800 is sub 210, and for the 400, sub 55. My number one event, I think, for this season is gonna be the mile, and my goal is 445. My main event is the 1600 and the 32. My goal for the 1600 is a sub five, and my goal for the 32 is 1030 or less. On the topic of goals, I want to run between 412 and 415 for 1600 meters and under 9 for a 3200. This would get me into at least one championship race at Nike Outdoor Nationals and possibly two. As far as placements, I don't want to set limits on myself this season, so I'll take each race as it comes. Following my first two races, I'm going to break this info up into three parts. My previous races, including how Max, Maceo, and Aaron performed, as well as an introduction to the Hamlin Elite Meet. I ended up running 422.00 and placing second. This fit inside my goal range of 420 to 424, but I also knew that I was in a little bit better shape than I raced. Two weeks later, I ran 910.69 in the 3200, splitting 438.432. I walked away from that race with a school record and a lot of confidence going into my next meet, given that I had a significant negative split while running solo. Across those two meets, Max ran 57.5 and 221, which leaves him in a solid starting spot for the season. Maceo ran 11.11 and 10.37, which isn't his main event, but it's still impressive that he was able to show such improvement in just two weeks. Aaron ran 11.47 and 5.17, giving him some work to do. For now, I'll be setting my teammates aside, but we'll still go in depth on how their seasons turn out towards the end of this documentary. And now lastly, it's time to discuss the Hamlin Elite Meet. Each year in the last week of April, Minnesota's best runners match up at Hamlin University. I entered my time into the 3200 and am coming into the race seated second out of 16 runners. Today is my first real test against the best in the state. Give me the vlog. All bit. right. Is this the Why are you wearing it? <laughs> this is Robert. I'm matching. What are your thoughts on Robert? I think he's gonna win. He's gonna win. three weeks removed from that race and just two days out from my conference meet. That race not only surprised me, but also many people around me. I went into Hamlin with every intention to win, 
which I did, yet I didn't know I was going to run 9 flat, let alone negative split by 8 seconds. At this point, my season was looking perfect on paper, but things aren't always as they seem. The day before Hamlin, my IT band started hurting, which gave me a little trouble, but eventually went away after about a week. To add on, in between then and now, I ran a 416-1600, which fell short of my goal of 412. While I do think I set my sights a bit high given I don't have as much speed as endurance, it's always disappointing to miss a goal. After not feeling amazing while running that 1600, my legs continued to struggle in workouts. After that race, I cut two workouts short, which proved to be a bigger test mentally than physically. I worried that I wasn't going to be able to continue improving and was confused how my legs went from feeling so good to so bad. I talked with my coach and we opted to take an extra rest day, which meant I would have more time into my next workout and more rest into the conference meet. And now, with just two days to go, I'm focused and ready to do something special. Alright, it's now eight days after the conference meet. The conference went alright, I ran 9.05, and even though the goal was 8.56, I'm not too disappointed with it. The air quality was not great, but the weather was fine, and you know, not much wind, or, and it wasn't too hot either. So, overall it was fine, it's always hard running alone, but today is the section meet, so today I'm going to be running, and it's Wednesday, and then I'll also be running on Friday. So if you're unfamiliar, sections is how you go to state, so top two qualify, or anyone under the qualifying times which this year are 9.18 and 4.17.9. So I'm coming in seated first in the 3200 tonight. My teammate Bennett, who I've talked about in my previous video, is seated second with a 9.35. So the goal today is for him to run 9.27, which would get him into the Nike Outdoor Nationals Emerging Elite Field. And then that would be fun, so then he could go to Oregon with me. So that's the goal for today. I'll give you a little update going into the race, going into the 1600 in two days. I'm vlogging. I'm vlogging. Rob, it's in here, dog. Oh, yeah. Let's go, Rob. Let's go, Bennett. Come on, let's go, Eli. Nice work, nice work. Let's go, Alright, it's now two days after I ran that 3200, so I ended up winning in a time of 920, and then my teammate Bennett ran 939, and he placed second, which means he's also going to state. However, he is not going to be going to Nike Outdoor Nationals, because he didn't hit the qualifying time of 928, which, you know, we went for it. I was pretty worried going into it. I wasn't sure if we were going to hit the paces, but I ended up being right on, which was good, but then he just couldn't hold on and it, it is what it is and we tried our best to hit that time. Unfortunately, he's not going to that. However, he is going to state so you'll see him next week. Overall, pretty good for both of us. And then now today, we are also both in the 1600. And so I'm about to leave. I'm just going to pick one of my teammates up and then we're going to go to the same school. And I think my goal for today is to hit the Nike Outdoor Nationals qualifying uh, standard for the championship race, which is 412.8. And then I'm also coming in seated second, which means I'm obviously trying to go for the win. We'll see how it goes, should be good, and I'll give you an update after.
So reflecting on your season, how do you feel about it? Take me through the highs and lows. Um, it was it was all right. First track season, I've done baseball all my life until this year. Yeah, this season was fantastic. And a part of that, well, most of it is because I did winter running. Usually I wrestle in the winter. I did that for five years. I wrestled all winter long and that doesn't really translate to track. So every every track year, I would just start fresh. Yeah, I'm definitely not excited with it. I had strong goals at the beginning and I I didn't hit them which is just motivation for the future. It's more different than I thought it'd be in terms of like the actual running versus cross country is, I don't know, for me, I kind of just go out, I run, I PR, and it kind of just works. Here's a little different in the pacing. It's a lot more speed work. And then coming in to the season, I had a base, which was like super, super useful. It, it didn't seem like I had a base because my first race, uh, I ran two mile and I ran an 11-11. Uh, so that wasn't necessarily a low because it was the start of the season that they were super hot out too. Yeah, so at the very beginning of the season, I had a bunch of hip issues that switched into other issues and uh, it took a while to recover from it. So my original goals were like f sub five um, for the 16 and uh, like a 1030 for the two mile. Um, I totally guessed wrong for the two mile. I ran one two mile, 1147. For the mile, the lowest I got down to was 509. I think I like overestimated myself a little bit. I got down to a 1036 in the next two mile I did. And then the next one was really big, 1020. I was like, dang, 1020. In that race, I thought I was super sick. I wasn't even gonna go. And then uh, my final two mile of the year, I ran 1010 which was a huge PR, a minute faster than last year. I'm really proud of it. So my goal was to go sub 55 in the 400, which I specialized in this season. I got to a very low 56, which I'm not happy about. And then the 800, I, my goal was 209, and I only ended up running one 800 throughout the season, um, which is at the very, very beginning of the year, and I ran like a 220. Given that it's your senior year, what are your plans for the future? Where does this put you for your final cross country and track seasons? At the end of the season, um, it's really motivating me to chase another PR and have a successful season. I'm really excited for summer running. Um, I love putting in miles and just running with the team. And as a captain too, I'm really excited to bring my team along with me. Running club, marathon, maybe I'll assist and coach for the team. If I have time, we could work that out maybe. Or but yeah, I'll be coming to the captain's practices anyway. I'll do track again next year. I, I really want to break that sub five mile. I'm looking to just keep training, keep running, get faster. All my dreams are gone. Are you going to set me up where I belong? Where I belong? Where I belong? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. came through the 200 in 11th place, which is not at all where I needed to be given I had the third fastest PR in the field. My 400 split was only half a second off 856 pace, but more importantly, I was almost immediately detached from the top three. Through 1600 meters, I moved up into fifth place, yet a three second gap had opened up between myself and the top three. I was now running with no one directly in front of me, and my chances of reconnecting with the lead pack diminishing by the second. With a gap already formed, it was tough to push the middle laps knowing fourth was really all I could achieve at this point. As a result, my split slowed. Now, 
I closed with relative ease and felt fairly confident in my ability to place fourth even after getting passed with 250 to go. Overall, I was extremely disappointed in my tactics and ultimately in my performance. I ran far off my PR and didn't even come close to what I could have run on that day. Clearly, the opening laps played a key role in that race, meaning for the future I need to be more comfortable going out harder in an attempt to set myself up for success later. After two days, I towed the line for the 1600, where I planned to redeem myself after such a disappointing previous finish. I didn't have much of a time goal since it was forecasted to be extremely windy, but I knew that I could place fourth at best. Let's go! I made sure to get out harder the first 100 and ultimately found myself feeling good going into the last lap. I placed 4th in a time of 4.17.68. The time is nothing special and it means I won't be able to compete in the mile at Nike. However, I'm still proud of my tactics and my placement for the race. And now, it's time for Nike. My strategy for this race is to go out in a 66 mid. Essentially, anything under 67. Those decimals add up and I don't want to think I'm on pace when I'm really slightly behind. I'm also not going to tolerate being behind pace. Generally, if it's early on and I'm a second or two behind, I justify it to myself but that leads me to lose competing with better athletes later in the race that can push me to run faster. I did a good job of this at the Roseville Invite, where when I found out I was off pace by a second, I sped up and was then ahead the next lap. Lastly, I'm gonna stay focused and compete the whole time. I did a good job of this in the 1600 because I was motivated by my recent poor performance. I felt engaged the whole time and I wanna maintain that attitude for my last race. Absolute heavyweights in this thing. laps to go. Weston Brown is now moving into second. He's got that quick turnover. One to go. And that was a 64 second lap for Weston Brown. So now here we go, Bob. This is where it's really interesting. This season was wild and will continue to serve as a reminder that setting limits on yourself does nothing but hold you back. With a breakout race early in the season, I started to feel the pressure to perform and began to worry when things didn't go perfect. My last race, however, is a testament to my ability to execute under this pressure. And most importantly, I feel that with every race, I'm continuing to get smarter as a runner. 
To cap things off, I'm out here at Lake Vadness with Bennett. We've been racing since I was in 5th grade and teammates since 7th. Our journey together as runners is coming to a close, though, with Bennett heading off to study and run for the University of Vermont in the fall. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all for Cross.